Welcome to section 2 of the bracket assembly tutorial, preparing geometry for meshing. In this video, the parasol geometry will be imported into Femap, and then it will be simplified, mid-surfaced, and prepared for meshing. First, go to File, Import Geometry, to import the geometry. Select the parasol file. Set the title to bracket assembly. Set the geometry scale factor to 1000. Make sure the increment color option is checked, and the increment layer option is unchecked. Increment layer imports each part in the assembly into separate layers. Increment color sets the outlines of each different part to be different colors. The geometry scale factor defines how units are converted when importing geometry. For this exercise, we use 1000 because the parasolid file is written using meters as the length unit, and we want to use millimeters in our model. You can use the measure tool to check the model to make sure it was imported in the correct units. Save the file by going to File, Save As, and name the file bracket underscore assembly underscore x dot mod fem. Now we are going to begin simplifying the geometry by removing or editing various geometry features. Simplifying the geometry increases mesh quality and reduces the time it takes for Femap to create the mesh as well as reducing analysis time. Use Geometry, Surface, Remove Hole to remove the holes on the tabs. Select a curve on each of the two small holes on the tabs of the bracket. Click OK to remove the holes. Small holes like this can create distorted elements when it comes to meshing. Use Geometry, Solid, Remove Face to remove the chamfers. Select the four chamfer faces and use the highlighter to verify the selected faces. Click OK to remove the chamfers. Removing the chamfer in this case will allow the bracket to be mid-surfaced correctly. Remove the geometry tabs by using Geometry Solid Slice Along Face. These tabs are removed because they will carry negligible load. This will be more apparent in a later video when the loads and constraints are added to the model. This command requires the user to select a face for cutting the solid. Select one of these side faces that exist in the plane that would cut the tab. Repeat the command by using Ctrl Y on your keyboard and slice the other tab. Use Delete Geometry Solid to remove the tabs. Use the highlighter to make sure only the tabs are removed. Accept the dialog to delete the tabs. Remove the extra faces on the bracket by using Geometry Solid Remove Face. Select the two blue surfaces on both sides of the bracket. These faces are left over from slicing the tabs. Now expand the geometry in the model info pane. The geometry containing the base bracket is now untitled since it has been edited. Select the base bracket geometry and right click on the corresponding checkbox and select show selected only. Use geometry mid surface offset tangent surface to generate mid surfaces for the bracket. Select the top surface as the seed face. Accept the default tangency tolerance of 0.1. This tangency tolerance determines how close face edges must be to be selected for the next operation. Click OK. Keep the default offset distance of 1.5. Note that 1.5 mm is half the thickness of the original bracket. You can also use the measure tool icon to change the thickness from which the mid-surface will be created. Click OK, and then accept the dialog to delete the original solid. With the base bracket mid-surface, the next steps are to create geometry features for map meshing around the holes. Washers and pad features will be used to do this. First, make sure that Geometry Curve from Surface Update Surfaces is toggled on. This is indicated by a blue outline around the icon. This is a very useful command to point out, and it should be toggled on when you want commands to automatically update the surfaces, when doing tasks such as projecting or intersecting curves onto surfaces. Next, use Geometry Curve from Surface Offset Curve Washer to create washers for all of the holes on the bracket. Enter the offset for the washers as 5 and click OK. Select one half circle arc on each of the four holes and click OK. You can see how this command created concentric circles, which are split in half, around the original holes. Now create pad features to help with mapped meshing around the holes. Use Geometry Curve from Surface Pad to create pad geometry around the large arcs on the base of the bracket. First, use the default pad size factor of 1. Pick the outer arc created by the washer, not the inner holes, and pick the whole base surface. 
Repeat the procedure for the other side of the bracket. Next, create the pad geometry around the smaller holes on the inside of the base bracket. Use geometry curve from surface pad again. For these, use a pad size factor of 1.25. Again, select the outer arcs created by the washer. To even further guide mapped meshing, the pad line can be extended to create four washer surfaces. Use geometry, curve from surface, point to edge to accomplish this. The mesh may be better after this operation. There are also many other commands that can be used to prepare the geometry to guide mapped meshing. Use Tools Entity Editor to open the editor if it is not open already. In the Model Info box, select the geometry named Offset Edge Imprint that contains the base bracket. In the Entity Editor toolbox, unlock the Entity Editor by clicking the Lock button. Change the title to Base Bracket and click Update Model to save the change. Note that the change has been reflected above. In the Model Info pane, select the geometry containing the arm. Right click on the corresponding checkbox and select Show Selected Only to display the arm. Now we are going to create a washer geometry around all of the holes in the arm. Use Geometry Curve from Surface, Offset Curve Washer with an offset of 5. Select the holes on the base of the arm, and for the clevis, only pick the outer holes. Use the highlighter tool to double check the selected curves. Now set the transparency of the surfaces on the arm solid to see the other surfaces and to improve the display. Specify a transparency value of 75%. Use Modify Transparency Surface. Press Ctrl on your keyboard and use the left mouse button to drag a box around the entire arm and click OK. Set the transparency to 75. Use the Entity Editor to change the name of the geometry to Arm, just like how we changed the name of the bracket. Now save the file. This concludes the Preparing Geometry for Meshing video of the FEMAP Bracket Assembly tutorial.